Hi, Alan Stratton from Aswood Turns. For this week's project, let's turn this bowl out of very wet cherry wood. It's a block with a couple of nasty knots coming out of it. I uh, actually didn't think it would yield anything when I started it up and got it going. I thought then it would really crack and warp because it had a very old dry knot here, uh, another knot over here, an uh, inclusion here with the, uh, with the way the branches grew out. Another natural edge here. I turned it down to finished thickness already, which is uh, about an eighth of an inch. Okay. So, uh, but uh, then you let I let it dry for a week. But then that means that you have a warped surface. It's impossible, really, to to put it up back on the lathe and to turn it and to sand it. So instead, I used this, which is a Morse taper collet with my sanding pad on it, draw bar that goes through my headstock, and I sanded it here. That gave me access around this way without having to hold a drill. If you're using a drill, you've got to secure it somehow, or use your drill press. Both of those would work uh, well, but I like this way. Uh, of course, it's not the only way to do it. So let's go ahead and turn this nice decorative bowl, it's pretty, out of cherry. I have clipped the corners from this half log of cherry. Please note the nasty knots coming out towards the live center. The wood is pressed between a spiked faceplate and the live center. There is no way this bowl would survive being cut round on a bandsaw. Plus, I can still adjust the block if I find some pretty feature. The offset is that initially, this is slow cutting with my bowl gouge. The initial cuts reveal a deep crotch, this prompts a decision whether to cut this area out or leave it as a natural edge. We'll see about that later. Now that it is somewhat round, I need to focus on cutting a tenon. More specifically, how much do I need to cut away before I can find solid wood and complete enough for a tenon? That problem, and with a final shape in mind, I cut away much of the live center side. I fine-tune the tenon with my skew, with the perfect angle for the dovetail. Now the wood is securely mounted in a chuck. After flattening what will become the top, I want a new mounting mode. This time a mortise in wood that will eventually be wasted away a bit later. A 1.5 inch hole will fit my long nose jaws nicely. Okay, so now the wood is flipped over again. What will be the bottom is towards the tailstock. This gives me clear access to tool the bottom. Just like I did on the other side, I drill a mortise in what will be the actual foot. Then clean up the bottom where the Forstner bit extended with the skew. Then I can bring up the live center padded by a rubber stopper. With the life center in place, I can work away from the turning axis. I'm forming the bottom with my bowl gouge. This form will be more like a platter with a short foot. Borrowing a technique from my recent wet turned goblet, as I reverse the wood again, I am placing a bit of plastic wrap between the wet wood and the chuck jaws. 
This will prevent black stains on the interior of the foot. I also cinch up a band clamp around the foot. The foot wall is thin and would crack without this resistance. With the plastic wrap, I have a little trouble centering the wood on the jaws. Perhaps I needed more of a dovetail. Still, after a remount, there's always some wobble to deal with. After tooling what I can on the bottom again, I switch to the top surface. The remaining bark peeled off the two indentations. I am working the outer couple of inches down to my target thickness of about 1 8 inch. Then work down the center mass and thin out the next couple of inches. After a trip to sharpen my bowl gouge, I can finish the remaining top surface. While I do need to work much of the middle, I do not dare touch the outer couple of inches. That would prompt an explosion. Then I put it away in a craft paper bag for about a week. It was surface dry in a couple of days, and I could have sanded it then, but I waited a bit longer to see if it would warp a little more. Then I mounted a sanding pad in a collet with my, a drawbar on my lathe, a drill press would have worked also, but I like the orientation on the lathe. I worked through the grits to 400 grit, and it didn't take that long to do so. Now for a final bath in walnut oil to highlight the grain. Yay! It survived! I am sorry you cannot feel the bumps and hollows from the warping and how smooth this has turned out. It is finger candy. At the beginning, with all the large knots protruding every which way, I felt that it had a slim chance of not flying apart or cracking while either turning or drying. It goes to show that I cannot always tell when an ugly, gnarly piece of wood will turn into a beautiful swan. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe on my website, and tell your friends about my videos. I appreciate your comments and questions. Always. Please wear your full face shield anytime the lathe is running. A face shield saved my life, and that is why I keep harping on this topic. And it can save yours, but only if you use it. I will see you again next week with another wood turning video.